what would happen if we keep few slices of bread on shelf for a few days? You will find that certain white or green outgrowths on the bread. So what are these outgrowths? From where does these outgrowths come from? How did it fall on the bread? Let's find out answers to all these questions in the chapter Microorganism, Friends and Foe. Hi, I'm Shajbin and today we'll discuss in detail what are microorganisms, what are the uses and their harmful effects. Let's start with the chapter. Microorganisms. What are microorganisms? Microorganism, if you just see the name, it indicates the whole meaning of it. Micro means very small. Micro means very small, minute, okay? And organisms means living creatures. So microorganisms are minute living creatures which are not visible through our naked eyes. So they are invisible, invisible by our naked eyes. So what, how do we view them? We view them using microscope. So we take aid of microscope to view these organisms. Now you will learn about microscope in the coming chapters. Now we will study what are microorganisms and where are they found. So now that you have understood microorganisms are minute living creatures which are not visible through our naked eyes. Now where are they found? They are found in places, they are found everywhere. Okay, they are found in air, in water, food, soil, even inside our living body, outside our living body, everywhere. Okay, so you can find them in air. Hence, why, when this corona disease was spread, we were asked to wear masks because these microorganisms were present in the air. They are found in water, whether it be water, salt water, whether fresh water or water anywhere. Even if there is a stagnant water in your compound, it is found in that water also. Similarly, microorganisms are also found in food. Whatever food we eat, they, we find them in that. Okay? Hence, we are asked to wash the food properly and cook them properly so that these microorganisms get killed. Next, they are found in soil. They are found in every soil. Soil of the beach, soil of deserts, every type of soil they are found. And they are found in many different places such as our living body, outside our living body, okay, everywhere else. Now, as I told you, they cannot be seen through our naked eyes. So, we cannot see them through our naked eyes. We need help of microscope to see this microorganism. Now, some of the microorganism, like I showed you in the earlier picture, the bread mold. Bread mold are visible through our uh, magnifying lens, okay, but most of the microorganisms are not visible through this magnifying lens also. They are only visible through microscope. Now, if we categorize microorganism, microorganism can be categorized into four different groups. So, let's find what are the different groups of microorganisms. So, the different groups of microorganisms are bacteria. They are unicellular microorganisms made up of only one kind of cell, okay, only one type of cell. Another comes algae. Algae are both, they, they can be unicellular or multicellular. So, algae are the second group of microorganism. The third group of microorganism is protozoa. Protozoa again they are unicellular microorganism. The fourth group of microorganism is fungi. So, these are the four group of microorganism. Bacteria, algae, protozoa and fungi. Now, in case of fungi, fungi can be unicellular, example yeast or multicellular like rhizopus, aspergillus, etc. Now, coming 
we have another microorganism that is virus. But we do not include this virus in the category of microorganism just because my virus has certain different behavior. Now, if you just see virus, we call it as a microorganism because it is not visible through our naked eyes. But the exception of this virus is they reproduce only microorganism, okay? Sorry, inside the host organism or inside the host microorganism. So, virus reproduce only inside a host organism. If the virus is outside the host organism, it act as a non-living thing, okay? It does not act as a living thing. Now that we have understood the categories of microorganism, we will move into the friendly microorganism. We have always heard that microorganism causes diseases, right? But have you ever heard that microorganisms also help us in many different things? Did you ever hear of, of that? So, microorganism can be used to prepare lot many things. They are used in our home from ancient time. They have been used in our home to make curd, to make breads. So, we keep on eating curd or bread, but have we ever thought these curd and breads are actually made by different microorganisms? Apart from that, microorganisms are used in industries for the production of alcohol, wine, even in medicines for the production of antibiotics, vaccines, etc. So, we will be finding the uses of microorganism one by one. The first use of microorganism is in making curd and bread. You know that when we keep the dough of a bread for a long time, we find that the dough raises. How does the dough raises? So, just imagine if I have taken a bowl of dough, if I have taken a bowl of dough, after 15 to 20 minutes or after an hour, the dough actually doubles up and it raises. This is because of the microorganism which was added in the preparation of the dough. And that microorganism is yeast. Yeast was added during the preparation of the dough. Yeast works in the sugar present in the dough and produce carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide makes the dough rise because the carbon dioxide produced get trapped inside the dough and because of that the dough rises. So, yeast has been used in making of bread, cakes, pastries from ancient time. Similarly, for the making of curd, lactobacillus has been used. Lactobacillus help to curdle the milk into curd. It converts the milk into curd. So, yeast is used for making bread. It is used for making bread, cakes, pastries and then lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is a bacteria. It is used for making curd. So, yeast is a fungi and lactobacillus is a bacteria. Both are unicellular. The only difference is yeast is a fungi and lactobacillus is a bacteria. Both are unicellular. Both help in the process of fermentation. Okay? One forms lactic acid, lactobacillus form lactic acid and the another one forms alcohol and carbon dioxide. So, we will learn about the next process that is fermentation. As we have understood that yeast help in the process of fermentation, these yeast has been used a lot in industrial purposes. Okay? Now, why are they used in industries? They are used in industries for the production of alcohols and wine. So, let us see how does the yeast work. So, yeast what they do, they convert the sugar. So, we take sugar, the sugar can be malt sugar, it can be sugar from fruit juice like grape juice. So, yeast work on this sugar 
convert the sugar into carbon dioxide and alcohol. They convert the sugar into carbon dioxide and alcohol. Now, this alcohols are marketed, ok. So, it is the process of, so what is fermentation? Fermentation is the process of conversion of sugars into alcohol. So, it is the process of conversion of sugars into alcohol and who converts it? It is converted by yeast, yeast are unicellular fungi. So, yeast is used for the commercial production of alcohol and wine. Now, depending on the substrate used, it get converted into either alcohol or wine, ok. Next, who has first, you know, discovered this process of fermentation? It's been from ancient time in the kitchen, but the first time it was discovered by Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur is the one who discovered fermentation for the first time. So, this was about fermentation. Now, as I have already mentioned that microorganisms are used in households for making bread, curd, etc. It is used in industries for making alcohol, wines. It is also used in medicines for making antibiotics, vaccines, etc. So, the first antibiotic that was discovered was penicillin. Penicillin was an antibiotic which was accidentally discovered by Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming once saw the growth of the growth of fungus which actually triggered the growth of bacteria. He was working in bacteria but the fungus, the infect, uh, the bacteria was infected by fungus and this fungus killed the bacteria. Later when he found it was the antibiotic penicillin that killed the bacteria. So, penicillin was actually taken from a fungus called penicillium notatum. Penicillium notatum is the fungus from which penicillin was extracted. It was extracted by Alexander Alexander Fleming. So, penicillin was first discovered by Alexander Fleming. Now, uh, it's, we have many other antibiotics in the market. It is not just penicillin, we have many other antibiotics in the market. And these antibiotics are produced from microorganisms such as fungi and bacteria. So, fungi and bacteria helps in the production of antibiotics. Now, see the term antibiotics. Antibiotics. So, what is the term indicate anti? Anti means against. Biotic means life. Okay. So, what are antibiotics? Antibiotics are chemicals which are against life. Against life of what? We eat antibiotics, right? So, is it against life of human beings? No, it is against life of bacteria, ok. Hence, for any bacterial infections, doctors prescribe antibiotics. So, antibiotics are chemicals which kills the bacteria, not human cells, but bacterial cells. Hence, for bacterial infections, we are prescribed with antibiotics. Now, let us see what are the different antibiotics in the market. So, the different antibiotics are penicillin. Penicillin is the first antibiotics. Till now, we use penicillin. Apart from that, we have streptomycin, tetracycline, erythromycin and many more. So, this was about antibiotics. Now, let us see what are vaccines. You have heard of vaccines a lot in this uh, period of two years, right? You have heard about Covishield or uh, Covaxin, etc. So, what are vaccines and why are they injected into our body? So, vaccines are 
injections of a dead or weakened organisms. They are injections of dead or weakened organisms that forms immunity against that organism in the body. So, what happens? We take vaccine before the invent of disease. So, before disease gets into our body, we take vaccines. So, what happens here is when we take vaccines, vaccines are dead or weakened germ of the same disease. If we are taking corona vaccine, corona vaccines are dead or weakened organism of the same corona causing organism. Okay. Now, here what happens here is when this dead or weakened organism goes into the body, our blood cells fight with this organisms and remember this organism in our system. So, when a live organism enter our body, already memory cells formed will kill this organism before the advent of the disease. So, that is how vaccine works and the process is known as vaccination. So, vaccination helps to provide immunity to our body. So, you can see here what is immunization? Immunization is the process by which an animal or a person stays protected from disease. Okay, that is known as immunization. So, if we are taking vaccines, we are getting immune from that particular disease. Using this procedure, world has eradicated smallpox completely. So, smallpox was a deadly disease. But vaccinating all the people who had smallpox or vaccinating all the people in the area, we were able to successfully eradicate the disease called smallpox. And the vaccine was first discovered by Edward Jenner. Edward Jenner was the first person who discovered vaccine. Now, let us solve a few questions. Okay? Name the microbe used for the preparation of curd. So, which microbe is used for the preparation of curd? It is the bacteria called lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is the bacteria which is used for the preparation of curd. Next, who first discovered antibiotic? Who first discovered antibiotic? Antibiotic was first discovered by Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming was the person who first discovered antibiotics. Which organism produced it? Which organism produced it? It was produced by the fungi called Penicillium notatum. Now, in industries, alcohol and wine are produced with the help of. Who produced alcohol and wine in the industry? In the industry, alcohol and wine is produced with the help of a unicellular fungi known as yeast. Penicillium notatum is a multicellular fungi and yeast is a unicellular fungi. Next question. What are vaccines? What are vaccines? Vaccines are dead or weakened organisms. Okay, Vaccines are preparations of dead and weakened organism. Name few antibiotics. What are the different antibiotics? We have studied the first antibiotic penicillin. Apart from that, we have studied streptomycin, tetracycline, erythromycin, etc. Now, where can we find microorganism? Where can we find microorganism? Microorganism can be found everywhere. They can be found in air, water, soil, inside the living organism, outside the living organisms, etc. Okay? Now, let us move on to soil fertility. We have seen that microorganisms are used in household purpose, it is used in industrial purpose, it is used in medicines. Now, microorganisms also help to increase the soil fertility. One such microorganism is nitrogen fixing microorganisms. They can be blue green algae such as cyanobacteria or they can be normal bacteria. 
so you might have learnt in your uh, lower grade that leguminous plants are always seen uh, in association with rhizobium bacteria so this rhizobium bacteria help to fix nitrogen so rhizobium is a bacteria and cyanobacteria is blue green algae cyan is a color which has a appearance of blue or greenish uh, tinge okay hence cyanobacteria are also known as blue green algae they are found in soil some are found in soil they are free living or some are found in association with the roots of the plant they give plant nitrogen because plants are not able to take free nitrogen free atmospheric nitrogen cannot be absorbed by the plants plants require soil nitrate and these soil nitrate are supplied by either cyanobacteria or by bacteria okay so bacteria that are able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere to enrich soil with nitrogen and increase its fertility are nitrogen fixing bacteria and we call them as biological nitrogen fixers cyanobacteria as well as rhizobiums are biological nitrogen fixers apart from nitrogen fixing microorganisms also help in the cleaning of the environment just imagine the waste the biodegradable waste which we dump in our environment if it is not degraded what would happen the whole earth will get accumulated with this waste material so these microorganisms helps to decompose dead and decaying substances so dead and decaying substances are decomposed by microorganisms not only microorganism we know that earthworms and all also helps to decompose this dead and decayed materials so they convert this substance into manure okay so these substance the decaying of these substance helps to form manure and then manure can be used to increase the fertility of the soil so manure are then used by plants to increase the fertility of the soil uh, manures are used and these manures the nutrients present in the manures are absorbed by the plants later on from the plant the animal gets the nutrients okay so this is a cycle it's a cycle now we have understood how microorganism are used in the cleaning of the environment so we have checked out that microorganisms are used in house it is used in industries it is used in medicine it's used in increasing the soil fertility and cleaning the environment so these are the uses of microorganisms but we also know that not all microorganisms are useful there are few categories of microorganisms that are very harmful so now let's move into that harmful category so harmful microorganisms harmful microorganisms are microorganisms that causes diseases in humans animals as well as plants such kind of microorganisms are known as harmful microorganisms and the other term used for harmful microorganisms are pathogens either we use it as pathogen or we use as germs you might have seen in many television ads using the term germs okay that all kills 99.9% of germs okay so either we can use the term pathogen or we can use the term germs for harmful microorganism so whatever disease a harmful microorganism cause can be spread from one person to another so the diseases which are caused by microorganisms are known as communicable diseases communicable diseases so communicable diseases are diseases that can be spread from one organism to another so those diseases are known as communicable diseases and communicable diseases are caused by 
pathogens. Pathogens are the one that causes communicable diseases. Now, you can see here this diseases that is the communicable diseases can be spread through many different modes. They can be spread through air in case of cold or any of the flu it spread through air. It can be spread through water, typhoid, cholera, these diseases are spread through water. It can be spread through food, again cholera can be spread through food also, ok. So, diseases can be spread through food. It can be spread through vectors, vectors such as mosquitoes, house flies, etc. It can also be spread through contact. So, these are the different modes through which diseases can be spread. Now, now that you have understood what are the different modes of spread, let us see what are the different diseases in humans. So, the different diseases which we are going to see today are here which are listed, ok. So, we have listed the diseases, the causal organism and the mode of transmission. So, let us see what are the different diseases. The first one is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis or in short we call it as TB. So, TB or tuberculosis it infects the lungs. So, here the causal organism is bacteria and the mode of transmission is air. One thing we need to remember if the mode of transmission is air then the disease will be respiratory disorders. If the mode of, uh, mode of transmission is food or water, the disease will mostly be a gut related disease, digestive system related disease. And if it is infected by any insects, so mostly it will be blood related disease because the insects bites and releases the pathogen into our blood stream. So, here tuberculosis. The bacteria, it is caused by bacteria. The bacteria entered the body through the medium of air. So, it is a respiratory disease. Next come cholera. Cholera is another bacterial disease. It is caused by consuming water which are contaminated or uh, eating food which has been contaminated by the bacteria. The next thing Measles, measles, polio, chicken pox and hepatitis. These all diseases are caused by virus. Okay, measles, polio, chicken pox, hepatitis, these all diseases are caused by virus and the mode of transmission of the measles virus are by air. Polio virus are by air and contact. Chicken pox again air and hepatitis B by water. Next comes the malaria, the most common disease malaria. We know that when mosquitoes bite us, we get the disease malaria. But the causal organisms are not mosquitoes. The causal organisms of malaria are protozoan. Protozoan causes malaria. Mosquito are the carriers. They carry, carry protozoan from one person's body to another person's body. So, mosquitoes are the carriers or the vectors of the pathogen that causes malaria. Apart from that we have fungal disease such as ringworm or athlete's foot etc. So, this was about the diseases that are caused in humans. There are diseases that are caused in animals as well as plants. We have very few diseases to learn uh, about. In animals we have only two diseases to learn. One is anthrax which is caused by bacteria and it is transmitted by air. Another disease is foot and mouth disease. Foot and mouth disease is caused by virus and it is also transmitted through air. Now next thing in coming to plants, in case of plants citrus canker, citrus, orange, lemon, ok, these fruits comes under the category of citrus. Citrus canker is a disease which is caused by bacteria and it is transmitted through air. Similarly, yellow vein mosaic of disease of bindi, bindi means lady finger ok. So, yellow vein mosaic disease of bindi or okra 
okra again is lady finger is caused by virus and it is transmitted through insects the next disease is rust of wheat rust of wheat is caused by fungi and it is transmitted through air seeds etc so these are the different diseases of animals and plants now let's move on to the another topic called food preservation we know that there are many vegetables or fruits that are produced only in a particular season mangoes are our favorite fruit and they are they are available only during summer season so how do we eat this food year long to eat this fruit year uh, foods year long we need to preserve them and there are different methods that are used for the preservation of food either you can use salts or sugars you can make pickles or jams for the preparation for the preservation of food so let's see the different methods used for the preservation of food the first method used is chemical method so chemical simple chemicals such as salt oil vinegar can be used for the preservation of food in industries they use sodium benzoate sodium benzoate or sodium meta bisulfate for preservation of food but at home we use salt oil etc for the preservation of food now the next method is preservation by common salt we know that dried fishes or mangoes etc can be preserved by using common salt the next method is preservation of sh by sugar that is making jams jellies okay preserving fruits by making jams and jellies the next method is preservation by using oil and vinegar achar is one such example pickle is one such example where we use oil vinegar as well as salt to preserve different fruits and vegetables even meats are also pickled using the same uh chemicals like oil vinegar and common salt then comes the heat and cold treatment this is mostly used for preserving milk so heat and cold treatment we have heard about pasteurization pasteurization is a process in which milk is heated at 70 degree celsius for 30 to 40 seconds after heating the milk at that temperature the milk is suddenly freezed okay so this give a double shock to the microorganism that are present in the milk and kills all the microorganism this process was also first discovered by louis pasteur hence they gave the name as pasteurization now apart from that we have to take care of storage and packaging also like in our last chapter we have studied if there are moisture present in any of the crop it would affect the whole crop okay if we have harvested the crop and there is moisture in the crop the fungus might grow into that or any other microorganism will grow and spoil the whole crop hence storage is very important we have to store the foods in air tight container to keep it for longer so this was about food preservation but if you do not preserve a food properly you may get food poisoning food poisoning are happens when we consume spoil food the toxics present in the spoil foods get into our guts and causes food poisoning food poisoning causes vomiting diarrhea and sometimes it becomes very fatal now next we'll move on to the topic called nitrogen fixation and nitrogen cycle this is the last topic which we are going to discuss here nitrogen fixation means the fixing of atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrate 
and we have learned that it is done by certain cyanobacteria or bacteria. These bacteria or these microorganisms can be free living or it can be seen in association with the roots of higher plants. So, one such example which we read is leguminous plant. In leguminous plant, in leguminous plant, these bacteria are seen in their roots. The bacteria called rhizobium, rhizobium are seen in their roots. So, what does rhizobium do? Rhizobium converts the atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrate. So, rhizobium converts atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrate. In return, the plants provide all the required nutrients for the survival of the rhizobium. So, it is a mutual relationship. It is a mutual relationship where rhizobium provide nitrogen to the leguminous plant and the leguminous plant provide all the kind of nutrient required for the survival of rhizobium bacteria. Apart from that, it also give a shelter for the bacteria. Okay, the root becomes the shelter for bacteria. So, this is what is nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fixation is very simple. It is like fixing of atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrate. Now, let us see the cycle. It is a cycle. From where nitrogen is used, nitrogen comes back to the same place. So, it is a cycle. Let us see the cycle. So, the atmospheric nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen get fixed in the soil. How does it get fixed? It get fixed by two, three means. The first means is by lightning. The atmospheric nitrogen which is present in the atmosphere due to lightning, it combines with the water. It combines with the water and form nitrate. So, this nitrate falls with the rain into the soil. So, one is through lightning, another is through the bacteria. As I told you, by cyanobacteria or by rhizobium, this atmospheric nitrogens are converted into soil nitrates. Okay? So, these bacteria which are present in the soil, they convert the atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrate. So, once it is converted into soil nitrate, the plants can easily absorb the soil nitrate. Because plants are incapable of absorbing atmospheric nitrogen, they require soil nitrate for absorption. Now, there are certain bacteria which we call it as denitrifying bacteria. They are the useful ones who work and convert atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrate, but there are certain bacteria who do the reverse process. They actually convert the soil nitrate into atmospheric nitrogen. So, the denitrifying bacteria converts the soil nitrate back into the atmospheric nitrogen. So, this is how the whole cycle get completed and nitrogen is very important for the plants as well as for animals because nitrogen helps in the production of protein. Okay, nitrogen helps in the production of protein. So, once nitrogen is absorbed by the plants, when we living organisms that is consumers consume uh, plants, we get the nitrogen. We cannot take atmospheric nitrogen, neither we can use soil nitrate. We get nitrogen only through plants. So, this was about the chapter. We will do a few questions. Now, name the organism that causes the following diseases. Organism that causes following diseases, tuberculosis. Who causes it? Bacteria. It is a bacterial disease, right? It is caused by bacteria. Malaria. Malaria is caused by protozoan. Cholera. Cholera is again caused by bacteria. Then comes chicken pox. Chicken pox is caused by virus. And then comes hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is again caused by virus. Now, which bacteria is seen in association with the leguminous plant? Which bacteria is seen 
it is the bacteria called rhizobium. What are their function? What does ry uh, rhizobium do? Rhizobium converts the atmospheric nitrogen into soil nitrate. Next we have name a few methods of food preservation. What are the different methods? Chemical method, preservation by common salt, preservation by sugar, preservation by oil and vinegar. Then we have hot and, uh, hot and cold treatment and we have seen storage and packing. These are the different methods of food preservation. Then what is pasteurization? What is pasteurization? Pasteurization is treating food substances with heat and cold, okay? Giving both heat and cold treatment to food substances. And this method kills all the germs present in that particular food. So this method was first discovered by Louis Pasteur. Hence, it got the name as pasteurization. So this was about the chapter. Okay, we have one more question. Anthrax is dash disease. Anthrax is dash disease. Anthrax is a animal disease. Okay, so anthrax is a animal disease. Now, I hope you have understood everything about the chapter and as well as you might have understood how the bread got spoiled, right? The bread was spoiled because the microorganism was present in the air. When the bread was left open in the shelf for a few days, the microorganism which was present in the air had fallen in the bread and grown, okay? So, that's how when we be in a clean surrounding, we be safe from different microorganisms. So, this was about the chapter. We will meet in the next chapter discussing different topics. Thank you. Manorama Horizon Learning Made Simple.